go. Charles was one of my sons that I really know that he was different, you know. Charles is always somebody that you could depend on when it came to anything. Charles, in the short time that he has been out of custody, this man is by far, you know, an extraordinary leader. Charles became a key spokesperson um, and a key organizer inside the Mesa Verde detention facility where he was being held. Bullet to all. Uh, my name is Charles Joseph, formerly incarcerated and recently released from ICE detention, but still facing deportation. is Indian. Because he's Indian, he couldn't own land on the island. He was part of parliament, he was part of the Labour Party, which fought for Indo-Fijian rights. So he faced a lot of hostilities. The discrimination that we faced in Fiji caused my parents to apply for, for residence in America. Even if going to school, he was doing so great, and uh, I kind of like have hope in him. Everything was good. I was a 4.0 GPA uh, mm -hmm. student. I had my own band, you know, which my dad had donated instruments and uh, kept me centered. But then when he ends up getting locked up, it uh, kind of messes me up emotionally. Suddenly things change when uh, his dad was no longer part of his life, you know. I know he look up to him. Charles's life was really spiraling out of control. Um, his father had been deported when he didn't have a safety net. He didn't have positive influential figures around in his life. And he, he ended up making the biggest mistake of his life and he robbed a 7-Eleven store. Um, no one was injured. He, he lost 13 years of his life for that. While Charles was in prison as a single mother, one of the hardest things was choosing between paying my bills or using that money to visit Charles. And sometimes we would go months without visiting him. When my dad was in prison, I was pretty sad and kind of depressed because I didn't have a father unlike everybody else. I felt sad and mad and, ha and not and even, even worried about him too. Every, everything that makes, makes, you, makes you feel bad for your parents that is gone. One of the hardest thing was seeing Hope and Carly going to family events, seeing kids with their fathers, wondering when their dad will be home. I was fortunate, I was blessed um, to be able to be in a position to help my fellow brothers in prison. One of the things that uh, me and Charles was involved in was pretty much facilitating the cultural awareness group for Pacific Islanders and Asians. Charles was involved in teaching dances that he learned when he remembered when he was a kid. Those groups every week Every week was feeding us, feeding our soul basically, and filling up the void that we had. And we organized the event, you know, uh, with the help of uh, Captain Durnancourt in Solano State Prison for the, uh, the Northern California Special Olympics. It was a charity drive, a Flame of Hope. I was given uh, two certificates one for highest donor, donor and the other one for uh, my work. 
participating and planning for the for the event and then I was playing guitar, making music. Charles was a great drummer. A lot of times uh, that music was our, our way of, of healing, our own way of therapy. And for us, music is a, is a personal thing, especially if it's your own, it's very personal. So we were vulnerable enough to share that with each other. Uh, I'll come out to the yard with a guitar and he'll come out with his guitar, we'll sit, we'll jam, and just created <laughs> beautiful music and music of hope in the environment where there's not much of. Playing music is, um, is grounding, you know? It's almost meditational. It's like, I don't even think about what I'm playing. Sometimes I just grab an instrument and I just start playing. And it just takes you to this place of kind of where everything is clear. He developed from someone who was arrested and convicted of armed robbery with a gun at the age of 22 to someone at the age of 35 who was committed to violence prevention, who had understood and recognized the harm that he had caused in this world. Cause I just want better for me. On the day that he was going to be released, his family was there to receive him and to welcome him home. Because Charles was not a citizen and born in another country, his conviction um, subjected him to mandatory detention and mandatory deportation. So this meant that the, on the day that Charles was to be released, ICE was there to pick him up. I'm waiting, my mom, I talked to her the night before and she's like, I'm gonna be in the parking lot. And so my mom and my wife were in the parking lot waiting for me. I was in the, in the holding tank with other, uh, other Hispanics around. There was a Mexican guy in there and he started saying, La Migra, La Migra. And everybody looking at each other like, like, oh shit, you know? And then he calls out my name and then they look at me. They're like, what? A negro? <laughs> they never got a chance to see me. Um... Looking at the mountains on my way to see you, not knowing it might be the last time I see you. When we arrived at your jail, we waited and waited for hours in the bipolar weather. And once we got into the building, we had to wait more. Then you finally came out of the door. I was happy to see you because we waited for hours and finally you came. We only got two hours with you, which went by faster than I thought it would. A few weeks later, I figured out that you might be deported. In my head, I was imagining Carly ending up like me, a girl that can't express her emotions and that is going through a lot, watching other girls with their dads and feeling sad, and soon all the sadness will evolve into anger that she'll have to hold in because she doesn't want to hurt anyone. He was my older son here, which I really rely on him a lot. After going to the vigil with Alumita, the girls and I, we had a chance to meet with elected representatives and attended World Without Walls to gain more support for Charles's pardon campaign. We got to know Charles through his family, from through hearing stories, and Charles was calling. We were able to be in phone communication. This communication we had with Charles was critical, especially when the outbreak of COVID-19 started happening. And there was huge concern about the impact of COVID-19 inside 
immigration detention centers and California prisons. So he was a main conduit of information from the inside to the outside world about what was actually happening. Uh, capturing the concerns, documenting the, the actual conditions, documenting the lack of hygiene, the lack of protective equipment, um, the inability for them to social distance. We are fathers, sons, brothers, husbands, and even grandfathers of American citizens. We don't have to be in custody, fighting just to return to our families. This is not necessary. Faith community believes that the transfers that are happening between prisons and immigration detention are wrong that people, once they have served their time, they've completed their sentences, they've earned release, should be able to go home, whether they're a citizen or a non-citizen. Being in detention, you're faced with the question like, whether to stay and fight or sign and leave. But I had to keep in mind my children and how much I want to be a part of their life. And I said, you know, kind of in joke, joking, <laughs> I was like, why on earth would you want to stop, you know, yourself from going to Fiji? I mean, that's the most beautiful place on earth. <laughs> you know, laughed and he said, well, you know, I have family here and my wife is here and my children are here and I'm ready to fight as, as long as it takes. Right now, the laws, the only way Charles can win his deportation case is if the governor grants a pardon to his crime uh, in 2007. Now, I cannot imagine a better case for a pardon than for Charles Joseph. Now that Charles is home, um, Hope and Carly got a chance to be with their dad but we're still living in fear because he could be deported anytime. Well, I chose to fight and stay. That's why I remained in detention for 11 months. And I continue to fight for my children to be here, to be here for them. Said I'm ready now to leave it all behind. Pain and hurt just ain't worth my time. And he was an integral part of my rehabilitation, basically. I just want better for um, the things we learned from each other uh, helped me and geared me to to better myself and come out here and do better. I said I'm ready It'll be a big now. difference, like leave a very huge difference behind. for our communities. We don't have too many Charles Josephs. We don't. Um, we don't have them in our community like that. The only way for Charles Joseph to not get deported is for him to get a pardon from the governor of California, Gavin Newsom. Be it Governor Gavin Newsom granted me pardon. That would uh, give me legal status, allow me to go back to work. You know, provide for my family and remain here in America with my children. Charles did his time. Charles deserves to be home. Charles deserved to be pardoned by Governor Newsom. Without the greed, without the need to succeed, stuck in a rat race, living in disgrace, defiling their own space, moving at a pace they can't chase. Grand illusions in their face. I said, I'm ready now to leave it all behind. Pain and hurt just ain't worth my time. Cause I just want better for me. Said I'm ready now to leave it all behind. Pain and
and hurt just ain't worth my time Cause I just want better for me Some people look from the horizon, look from your, open your eyes.